In this video I wanted to go over doing a three-axis roughing operation in RhinoCam. The first thing we want to do, I'm going to turn on my material layer, my foam layer. Uh, the first thing we want to do is set our stock material. Uh, the the program is going to use the stock material and the 3D models that we give it to calculate the tool paths. So to set the stock, I just turn my layer on, select that material, then I can come over here to stock in the RhinoCam window and do choose the stock from selection option. If I hide my foam layer, you can see that there's a ghosted box um, that represents my stock in RhinoCam, and I can toggle visibility of that down here. The next thing, I'm going to start by selecting a part region. I'm going to look just at uh, this first part here to start. Um, the, the part region I have a couple different curves here and I just wanted to point out that the what the region is doing is it's saying that this is where my parts are located and so if we go to top view uh, essentially that's what the um, what the software is determining that's what the machine is going to see it's uh, so the region is just a, a window in top view that's saying here's where my parts are located. Um, and so it doesn't matter if it's a flat curve or a three-dimensional curve. Um, it could be either, uh, but it's just a window around the, the part. Um, so with, with our stock set and that uh, that region selected. I'm going to go up to machining operations, three axis, horizontal roughing. And so once again, you'll see if I select that curve, uh, the drive region, um, under the part region tab, it'll show you uh, that that's the area that we're looking at. Uh, just like with the two-axis programming, I'm going to move through the tabs, uh, left to right and bottom up to top. A lot of this is going to be very similar, so it should go pretty quickly. Uh, under Tool, um, there's a variety of foam tools in here. Uh, we most commonly use uh, our longer cutters for foam, so we have this four and a half inch tool for foam. Uh, again, just like with two-axis cutting, we usually choose our tools. Uh, we try to use a larger tool uh, wherever we can to remove material as fast as possible, um, and then only use a smaller tool where we need to to uh, get more detail out of our parts um, or to get into smaller areas. For the roughing operation, uh, usually I want to use a half inch uh, tool and um, I also want to use a flat tool. I mentioned uh, in the two axis videos that um, the round end tool or the ball end tools uh, we would use in three axis uh, programming. Um, but those won't come into play until later when we look at our finishing passes. For now, I'm going to choose the half inch flat tool. Um, this will be the first tool, or the first tool I'm using, and the first operation. And so I want to have a value of tool one that'll go in my first tool holder on the machine. Uh, so that's already set. So that's all I need to do right now is just select the tool. 
I'll then move over to the feeds and speeds tab. You can see uh, what I want to do here again is just click load from tool and that should make sure that the settings are loaded from my tool that I just selected. You can see here that the speed of the machine, the travel speed, are uh, 250 inches per minute. Um, the you may notice that for the plywood in the two axis tutorials that the speeds were 200 inches per minute and so generally the foam cutting is going to be uh, a bit faster than the wood cutting. Moving over to the clearance plane, uh, the default setting for clearance plane uh, will be automatic I like to use the absolute Z value and again um, what we want to put in here is uh, a value that's a, at least an inch above our material uh, just as a general rule uh, and that's going to be the height where the machine uh, travels to when it's starting the machining process and also in between cuts. Um, but, so I'm using 2 inch foam here is my material so I'm going to set my clearance plane at 3 inches and and that will assure that the machine is uh, should be about an inch above my material when I'm cutting and I can uh, visually look and verify uh, that the machine is going to the right height. Going up to cut parameters The cut parameters here is, are pretty similar to the step over um, for a two axis pocketing pass. And the, so the only value we need to worry about on the screen is down here in the step over distance. And once again, just like with the two axis pocketing pass, uh, we're going to use a, generally a step over of 50% of the tool diameter. There are some other things we might adjust on this menu, um, but for now, uh, that's really the only uh, setting that we need to adjust. I'll move over to the cut levels. Um, this is similar to setting the, the, um, the total depth of your cuts and um, the depth per cut of each pass of your cuts in two axis programming uh, except in the horizontal roughing as I've mentioned the RhinoCam is using uh, the region that we've given it the part that's within that region and the part that represents our material to calculate where the tool pass will be so all we need we don't need to tell it where the top of the material is or anything, how thick the material is, it already has that from us assigning that stock. Uh, we just need to tell it how far down to cut at a time. And so with the two axis programming, we used, we set a cut depth that was equal to the radius of the tool or 50% of the tool diameter. And we'll use that same value here um, typically for the step down control in the horizontal roughing pass. So the default value is already 50, we, so we don't have to change anything. Um, and that's, that's all we need to worry about adjusting on this screen uh, for now. I'll move over to engage retract. Just like with our two axis operations, we want to uh, set a um, soft entry, and we can do that by adjusting the, the slope of this angle here. And we will set this H value over here for height to match the cut level. So if I go back to cut level, my cut level is 50% of the tool diameter and I'm using a half inch tool 
so my height value will be 0.25 um, there isn't anything to adjust in the advanced cut parameters uh, so at this point we would just click generate And we would see uh, that our toolpaths generate now. And we have uh, three levels, with each with its own offset pattern, to carve away the material that's not needed, that we're not going to use. And so I could. Uh, now apply this same roughing to all of the geometry in here. I just need to set the individual part regions. Uh, so to do that I'll double click my folder over here. I'll click remove all and then select curve edge regions and I can go through and select each of uh, my different part regions for my different parts and then uh, hit enter or right uh, right click and then if I generate again um, it'll apply that roughing to all of those different areas And so you can see now that I've got um, a roughing pass in each of those different spots. And what I'd like to do if we go up to the simulation um, We'll run through the simulation here. So I just right clicked and did my simulate. And uh, if I turn off the toolpath visibility, you can see that this is the end result of that roughing pass. So it's just sort of uh, carved out the material that we don't need. And um, it's left sort of these stepped uh, objects that um, we'll come back and remove in, um, in with our finishing passes in, in the next uh, operation. So that's the horizontal roughing pass. Um, we'll pick up with some of the finishing operations in the next video. Thanks.